So, uh, yesterday we had two decisive results when uh, Gerard Gretason beat Tristan Thorosson with the black pieces and Hannes Stefansson beat Helgi Ask Gretason. So, Hannes leads with two out of two, chased by Gerard with one and a half and Brian Thorosson who also has one and a half. So, the marquee matchup for today is here in the middle. Board 3, uh, Bray Thorfinnsson with white against Hannes Stefansson. And we're also going to keep an eye on uh, what Hjörvar needs to win to, uh, to, to have good chances. And we have a bunch of people on one who will try to... Uh, Catch a bit up on the table after a slow start. But let's go on and look at some games. So, first game we're going to look at is. <coughs> Gisnason against Gunnar Kartansson. So we would say White is Gunnar Gisla, Black is Gunnar Kartansson. So let's get cracking. So, Gumigisla with white, he had a tough draw yesterday against uh, Henrik Danielsson, where he defended tenaciously, and in the end, Henrik didn't find the best moves, and the draw was agreed. It was a nice instructive uh, theme in a rook, in a rook ending. So on this one, uh be Kjartans with black, Kjartansson. And here, uh Gisla plays H3, which kind of signals that he's going to play the uh, London system with bishop f4. But the h3 move, h3 move is not necessary already on move 3, and it's rare that... Uh, practi practitioners of the London play H3 that early, and I'm thinking if uh, Black can try and take advantage of that, uh, maybe it's hard to do, but but H3 feels uh, feels a bit early. But okay, Bishop, and this is the London system, which I find can be. Uh, an effective blitz weapon and uh, also effective, I think, in, in some cases against a king city and setup. In this case, I think he could be played knight b to d2, which I think is too early. Uh, just play e3. And unless he's thinking about a different setup, uh, if, he's, if he wants to play e4, but that also doesn't make a whole lot of sense, then you're uh, transposing to a pitch where. Uh, the bishop on f4 is not particularly effective, and usually you're not putting it on uh, on h2. It makes more sense to uh, have your pawns on e3 and d4 on f2 because most often the bishop goes back here, and then uh, the pawns kind of help the bishop to control this this diagonal here by being on black squares. And you know you want your pawns outside the pawn chain. So only and another point is. There's a well a common line here. Let's say uh, we go e3, uh, new variation, d6, bishop e2, most common, like b7. Uh, there's one line here where uh, black goes for uh, this e5 push. Let's say we go back, and now we can play even c c4. And in this case, it's it's good to have the d2 square for for the, for this knight. And the c3 square for the other. 
And this is a good position for white. It's sort of like a king's Indian attack for black with colors reversed. But this bishop on, on h2 makes makes all the difference in the world and makes any attack by black here uh, very hard to accomplish. I like to play here rook e1, put the, put the bishop on f1, and then storm with my queenside pawns, and most often the uh, attack on the queenside is much more dangerous for white. But Okay, so knight bt2, c5. So to me, yeah, it feels like Maybe not 100% familiar with the nuances of, of London, but okay, it doesn't matter really. Usually you, you get a fine position if you just set it up like this, uh, whichever move order you choose. But in this case, Gimmick took on d4, and this is a good line for black, uh, I believe, when you can often open up things with e5. And uh, yeah, you can play e5 here as a pawn sacrifice, and now that I think of it, uh, bishop e2. Knight d5. Now that I think of it, Gummistar is allowed chess. And in some cases, you can even play e5 as a pawn sacrifice. Uh, that's what was uh, suggested by by Avruk in one of his anti. Uh, well, anti, you know, d4 sidelines book. Where he had the Raptor for black against uh, these d4 sidelines like the London, the Collie. And. <coughs> <clears throat> yeah, I mean, maybe even here, e5, and the idea is white hasn't castled, and once we take on e5, we have uh, rook e8, and there's a nice competition down this e5, but could we play here first, bishop h2, and now e5, which also makes sense because it's not a pawn sacrifice now. He takes e5, white castled, rook e8, bishop to c4. Bishop e6, and it's clear that black should have more or less solved all his opening problems here. And usually, the case with the London is white just wants to get a solid position, so position is, is around equal. And we'll see what happens. Knight e4 and uh, rook to e7. And this move signals that black wants to take over the d file. <clears throat> but even still, um, who's better here? Uh, yeah, it's up for debate. It should, should be around equal. I mean, white uh, always has moves like knight c5, but on the other hand, once we exchange queens, black has knight a4, f4, e4, pressure on these pawns. So, should hover around equal, but. Uh, Not sure, maybe it, maybe I would even prefer white. Yeah, especially if, if we get knight c5 in uh, before black does get knight e4 in. Yeah, it's, it's a good pattern that once you have b2 and c3 pawns, then uh, a knight on a4 is often a very strong square for the knight, putting pressure on the pawns, and because the knight is attacking b2, uh, the pawn was attack c3, you can't move the b pawn because we take the c pawn. Hey! Got a guest here. Hey, you want to be on TV? Come, come say hi. Hi. Wave here. Huh? Hi. Hi! And then look here. We'll come in about 10 seconds. Look, 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 look. <laughs> okay, but on, on with the show. This is the current position. <laughs> so let's... Uh, move on to some other games unless we have new moves, no new moves, so let's get rid of the arrows man. I'm going crazy with the arrows. Look before. 
94 rupees. Okay, let's look at our next game. Kertason against Henrik Danielsson. Let's change the title for you guys. Long, let's hope not. Nope, I didn't. Both of these guys are grandmasters. So Helke with white opened with d4. In the first round he opened with uh, c4. But uh, well, d6 was played in this. Henry has been playing a lot. And it's sort of a flexible move. If white plays e4 as well as he did in the game, so let's talk about the others first. If he plays c4, you can think about uh, this endgame. Take takes, which uh, actually most people think is even slightly better for black because of some weaknesses made by the z pawn, which would rather be on, on c2. Um, against knight f3, you can think about. You know, offbeat systems like this, which, for instance, Tony Miles played. You can play the King's Indian still with g6. But we should mention that Henrik is one of the leading experts in, in the Leningrad, Leningrad Dutch. And we can still transpose into into that opening by, by going f5. Halki, however, went e4. And after knight f6, knight c3, pawn to e5. We will be transferring from this move order to the Felidor defense. Here, white can take on e5 and go for this ending, but again, it, it's solid for black. And this is one way to play it with bishop e6. I mean, the double pawn might look bad, but also on the other hand, it's attacking another square. Do you want to go to so protecting a lot of squares, but um, yeah, most often black will have more experience in these lines when he's playing it. But I think white should be should be slightly better here. And for choice one, uh, well, a sophisticated maneuver that you should maybe know about here for white is to play at some point, maybe not yet, pawn f3, put your knight on d3. And the other knight could be maneuvered to c4, and then you have knight on c4 and knight on d3, and they're both attacking e pawn. And this bishop can also be maneuvered uh, possibly to b2, possibly to uh, g3 to put more pressure on this pawn. But Maybe that's not enough because black can, can also defend it, but I've seen games where uh, white has employed such a plan to attack these pawns. But these positions aren't everyone's cup of tea. So Helki decided to go for a mainland field or here with knight f3, when we transpose that to knight bd7. So bishop c4, bishop e7. I think this is called the the ham, han ham variation or something more of filter. Yeah, well, I've always been a, a little bit fascinated by it. Um, the white went a4, the black went a5. That, that's one way to play it. Another way to play it is to play b6. Okay, I'm just gonna look up the reference. You play queen c7, b6, bishop e7. I think b6 is a common move here. Yeah, I think, uh, yeah, looking it up in the database now, b6 is by, well, maybe a 2 to 1 favorite here as the most common move, and a5 is the second most common, and then queen c7. With b6, okay, white can either 
you, you can play d5 here but there's also a slow tournament like this maybe b3 uh, a6 black wants to play b5 and i think usually the bishop goes back to f1 you go here so bishop b7 queen c7 eventually uh, b5 I mean, solid position for black, but of, of course, white has nothing to fear here. And in some cases, it feels like, you know, a quiet maneuvering type of position, sort of like a rule of but of course with some, some differences, but uh, Henry played a5. Ah, ah, just a moment, to forget one thing. Forgot one thing. One man, one man. I was going to say a word that I can't say. There's so many, uh, so many word nets. You have to, you have to watch out. By that I mean you say some word and somebody will, will get offended on behalf of a group of people or something. You know, but words aren't bad. It's just a meaning. So it's like uh, with the black pieces today. Hey, can't say black. Man. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, with the African American pieces, Henrik Danielson. Hanky, hanky, panky. So a4, a5. Yeah, I lost my train of thought. Bishop a2. Black took on d4. And yeah, Henrik has, has been playing this a lot. And against grandmasters, uh, it's 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 solid. Often tough to crack, so I'm getting a lot of draws. But on the other hand, it also can be hard to win. Queen b6. But here, an interesting moment. And at the queen b6, Hanky uh, with white played a very aggressive move and also a highly committal move. Because if, if things don't work out, you might be burning some bridges. Maybe just bridges or uh, light bridges. He played pawn to g4. Very aggressive, as you say. And this signals uh, that he wants to attack, he wants to win this game. This can facilitate the light jump to f5. And now we take with uh, maybe the g-pawn, try and open up the g-file. some cases we might push g5, but that seems a little committal as well. Uh, Henry goes with bishop to e6. And... Yeah, okay, giving up the bishop pair, but... Maybe taking with a knight is not so great. Might be possible to take the knight actually. Okay, if you take with the bishop, then we take it back with the pawn. That, that's for sure. Uh, with this, because we, we, they can't allow the f5 square. So we take with the pawn. If you take with the knight, then you know we're allowing we're allowing this too easily. But if you take with the knight, uh, that's a question. Maybe black takes with the knight now, but uh, I'm not sure. I take with a pawn. Yeah, it's tricky. Maybe you can play this. Uh, I mean, I, I know this is hanging, but maybe it's tricky somehow. Okay, if, um, yeah. A3 looks like a shaky square. I mean, if you go here, there's always this hanging. Uh, now the B file can be used as well. And I was a little bit worried about D4. 
fire, but maybe it's okay. Yeah, I thought there was some, some shakiness on, 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 on the e-file, but it actually looks okay. So maybe you would have taken with a pawn. But of course you work, work things out before you play this move, but it's all a moot point because Helki went to knight to f5, which is the current position. Helki down to uh, 28 minutes. Ooh la la. Wow, we what? Yeah, I mentioned before that uh, Henke is prone to time travel. I had this uh, little bio that I made for some of the players. And uh, where are you at, Mr. Gretason? There you are. Yeah, like I said, hasn't played for a while, was the 1994 World Junior Champion. Positional solid player, but maybe I have to reconsider that with uh, his aggression <laughs> in rounds two and now round three. And yeah, my, my uh, memory told me that he was rather time travel prone and this game seems to prove that after, after 13 moves. Where, uh, well, move uh, as early as move 8, we're still in, in rather well known theory. Uh, he's down to 28 minutes. Still 27 moves remaining, so almost down to 1 minute plus increment per move. But it will be uh, interesting to see how how Hanky will do in this tournament after, after a long layoff from, uh, from tournament chess. So, uh, black to moon now. Yeah, we should mention that in general, Henrik is playing rather fast. And sometimes that's an asset, but yesterday uh, it wasn't to his benefit when he had 31 minutes for the critical position in the rook ending. And I had the choice between, between a winning move and, and a drawing move. And, Played the move rather fast and the result was a draw. So let's move on to some further games. Let's see some more games. Uh, let's set the title for this one. <coughs> well, what are we going to look at next? How about, yeah, the marquee matchup. Marquee matchup. Thor Finson, Thor, 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 Finson. So I only have to put Thor Finson now because there are not two. There were supposed to be two Thor Finsons, but but unfortunately one of them had to withdraw. And. So we only have one. So don't have to distinguish between the Thorfinnsons. This is Bray. This brother Beard is not playing. And we'll see if they uh, will build up a tradition. Uh, last year, Bjorn was second. And the year before that, Bray was second in the Iceland Championship. So let's hope uh, the trend can be broken, but in a nice way. So Bray with white, with d4, knight of 6 c4, e6. And Hannes has been playing rather predictably in the, the Nimso Indian uh, against d4 almost exclusively recently, so maybe easy to prepare for him. And I managed to do that recently in a tournament here in Iceland where I played the f3, f3 line in, in the Nimso Indian. And got a good game. But in this game we have, well, okay, knight f3 is the queen's Indian, but after knight c3 we kind of transpose if uh, black was bishop b4, but he's keeping it in, in 
Nimsha territory, as always in the Nimsha and Queen's Indian, you're trying to control the e4 square. Bishop to g5, Bishop to e7. Yeah, e3. Uh, yeah, okay, yeah, it's a different line. I was trying to remember another line. But okay, e3. Castle. This should be two. Well, a rather solid, non-committal set up a white, which seems to give black a rather solid position. Place d5. And now white takes on f6 after h6, bishop h4. Loses the tempo here, but must have been. Uh, for this type of structure, she takes d5, e takes d5. And often times this is this is an okay uh, exchange for white. I mean, the bishop is out of pawn chain, so maybe black bishop is fighting a little bit on granite. We can't really find an effective diagonal. And white will try to. Uh, on the queen side castle and put some pressure on, on, on the c file, maybe it'll be a b4, b5 at some point. But here maybe uh, black can think about some c file moves, and that's an, okay, indeed what happened. After b4, trying to prevent c5, but you're too late here. Black played c5. b takes, b takes. So he wants to try to open this diagonal, but white will not allow him to do that. Castle. And she takes d4. Uh, I think c4 might be an option, but probably he felt like it was closing the position a little bit too much. And probably that's the case. I mean, c4, you, okay, you play it here. c4, you lose a lot of flexibility. I mean, now you can't open this diagonal. This diagonal is closed. What, what is first on the b-file? We can also play a, a knight to d2, put a bishop on f3, and put some pressure on this d-pawn. So c4 looks like it loses a lot of flexibility, so c takes d4, and knight takes d4. And now despite the, uh, the isolated pawn, black can uh, get some active play for his pieces. He played knight c6, but b1 was played. And they seem to be spending their time in a similar fashion here. Knight takes d4, e takes d4. Queen to a5, counter attacking. Uh, the rook was attacked, but now we go for, for, uh, for the knight. But white doesn't care. It looks like white might be going here for a. If he allows this, it looks like he's going for a draw option. Color bishops. He wants to attack d5 here. Queen takes e3. Yeah, bishop f3 attacking d5. Rook back to d8. Queen b3. And this seems to be heading for a quick draw actually. The point though is they can't agree to a draw before move 30, so they have to play some moves, but. Uh, yeah, the thing is, if you go bishop takes, or queen takes, well, bishop takes, we just take on d5, and everything's equal, and well, uh, actually, black has to watch out here. If queen takes, rook e1, and then we'll take on d5. Finally, there's uh, queen takes b3, which, uh, well, we can take with the rook or the pawn, maybe, maybe keep the rook active. If bishop takes d4, rook d1. So maybe he wants to even take on d4, bishop b6, yeah. bishop takes d5. A little bit tricky because you, you can't defend here because, well, you have counter actually. There's counter on f2, so it's, uh, it's actually quite okay. But to me, uh, it seems like it should be an easy draw here. 
Rose room. Queen B3 was played actually. Queen takes B3. A takes B3. So I have a feeling we'll see uh, a quick draw. They have to finish their their 30 moves, but uh, yeah, there's not much to play for. I think I might be able to draw against Carlson here comfortably. Which, uh, well, that's not generalized. So it takes B3, Rook A to B8. Also might find a way to check me, actually. <laughs> yeah, probably. No, I, th I think I have good chances to draw here. Let's say that I have good chances to draw against Carlson. Let's leave it at that. So unfortunately, yeah, not the most exciting game, and I have a feeling we'll see some quick moves and draw here. And we'll, well, we'll come back to this just for for completeness' sake and finish this one. Uh, so if this is a draw, that means that uh, the field can catch up a little bit by simply winning some games. So let's have a look at Herbert, who is in second place. Put his name on the screen. So that's GM. Uh, there are actually two good options. And a shout out to his brother Birgir, if he's watching. A big fan of Real Madrid. Who became champions of, of Europe yesterday. Congratulations to them on a dramatic game. <laughs> I'm also a fan, so. Can't say uh, my feelings were hurt by a rather late goal in injury time, forcing the the overtime. C4, C6, Knight F3, and Pawn to E6. So you have to play in the triangle, um, which uh, Helgi Aus Kritason played against Hannes Stefansson yesterday, and here were chooses the same move as as Hannes did, Queen C2. The most solid move, actually. Avoiding any, any pawn sacrifices and avoiding the main line of the note boom. Knight of 6. Knight bt2. Knight bt7. G3. B6. Looks like we're gonna get a similar game. From yesterday, castles. C5. B3. But here white hasn't played e4, that's uh, the main difference. Well, maybe that's not to white's benefit here actually. D takes c4, b takes c4, and c takes d4. Um, black has managed to uh, simplify quite a bit here and he has now got the better pawn structure. Bishop c5, knight 2 to b3, castles, bishop b2, black should be absolutely fine here. Um, e4, rook f d8, rook a to c1, bishop jump, jumps back to e7, now we're going to put a knight on, on c5, at some point, queen to e2, rook 8 to c8, I think. That's the current position now. Rook F to D1. And A6. We're getting in quick moves here. Uh, here we're with 51 minutes. Uh, in a healthy 38. So white to move. And this looks like um, a hedgehog, except that uh, white doesn't have a people. Which would normally be here. The black doesn't have any uh, B pawn. Which would normally be here. Also, we've exchanged the light square bishops. So the feeling here is actually I might, I might like black here. Because white 
Why does it lose flexibility? You know, in the Hedgehog, B pawn sometimes you're uh, you're pawn storming with uh, you know a3, b4, you're building up, and then at some point you play a4, a5. And after a5, b takes you maybe b5, trying to break open the position. But here, yeah, you lose some flexibility, and also the pawn on uh, c4 is a constant source of, of worry for white. Yeah, this seems easier to play for, for black here. You can, uh, you know, play queen d7, put pressure on, on e4, and top of the rooks on the c file, something like this. Knight jumps to c5, maybe in some cases e5. Uh, not at all clear what what can and will do. Yeah, so I actually like black here. Actually, like block. I will come back to this. Uh, and let's finish our, our attempt to catch up with the games by looking at Kieran's uh, thinkers on against Thurston Thoros. That's uh, Stinker Mason with white. And stuff also. So c4, uh, e6, and now instead of the first round, well, when in the first round, uh, first he went for something he doesn't normally play, now he goes for his normal lines. I played many games with him with white, where he just plays. I lost the Carlo. So castles, castles. Castles, what goes b3? Yeah, if you got d4, you have more like a mainland Catalan. Where black can play c6. Or take on c4. When this is a mainland and rather well known. d3, uh, yeah. It's another attempt to play the position. Yeah, which I think uh, Marin recommended. I mean, uh, he thinks, um, of course, the Catalan is is, uh, is quite okay, but there was already a big volume on the Catalan by Boris Avruk. That's e6, e3. So, uh, yeah, this is the approach the uh, he uh, actually advocated in the structure box. So, uh, b6. Uh, well, black can play d4 here, and we'll uh, just have my attention d4 when we're entering sort of um, Benoni with uh, reversed colors uh, territory. Here, I believe rook e1 is actually the move to prevent e5. d3 can be played, but it, it's a risky move, and the pawn can easily push around it to d3. We can prevent knight before then play maybe rook here, bishop here. I think the pawn will be grabbed rather easily. So black has to be careful. So that's if you want uh depend on your if you were a structure of b6, knight to c3, and bishop a6, okay, interesting move. Yeah, I recently had Two games in this line with white. 
Well, actually, more than that. And yeah, I think Bishop A6 was played in one of the games. Queen E2, Rook C8, Rook A to C1. Probably D4 is still. Still a bit risky. I mean, it can be played, but. Black didn't go for it, instead he went to queen d7. The knight jumped into b5. And this knight can also be captured. But maybe it's not all clear. Knight takes b5, pawn takes b5. Probably white likes this. This uh, is not active. Less diagonal, and the pawn is sufficiently covered. We can cover it with a4 also, and um, we can open up with d4 and take, or or just play, play solidly. White now has the bishop pair, so black did not go for that one. Uh, maybe five with f to d8. And, uh, d4. Quite often the idea in these lines. Black took on d4 and white took with a pawn. Okay. Interesting. Very interesting. There's always white has to calculate a lot, you know, if, if black can take on b5. If you do here, well the knight becomes Somewhat bad, the idea has to go to b8 or a5, and the square makes a huge impression. And then e5 jump. And come. Uh, yeah, and the c6 square will be weak because either we have to keep an item b8 or a5, and it, we can't really keep it on a5, and then the c6 square becomes weak. So even though the bishops don't really have any diagonals, you know, they can become. Factor later in the game. Black didn't like this, he played queen e8. Rook fd1 and h6. So, yeah, a solid approach by black. And it doesn't seem to have any, any particular problems. White might actually have to watch out here. Uh, it's hard for him to move uh, move the c pawn. Uh, either c5 or c takes d5. And we're undermining the knight. And this is opening up some tactical possibilities. Uh, maybe even rook takes d5. Pressuring this, but then there's a4. I mean, knight takes d5 looks like the most natural move, of course. And black is, yeah, black is doing great. I mean, white is never taken on d5, I'm just speculating about this pawn. Uh, so, how does white actually continue that? So, it's also a good question. It's is sort of. It's just a waiting move, you know, white, white to move, please make a move. Uh, I'll make a move for my king, I'll cover the g5 square. My position is solid. Uh, go ahead, make a move. Uh, and well, okay, he actually made a move, pawn to a4. Felt like his bishop, uh, no, sorry, knight on p5. Needed some further protection. And here I'm getting a visit from some perch. <laughs> Nothing for you guys here. Sorry. So A4. Yeah, this is uh, rather quiet still. Uh, heavy. 
maneuvering struggle and once again a position where we don't have any significant pawn breaks I mean black can post up with a knight on b4 uh, well at some point not, not immediately because of this pawn but I think about posting up on this square and nothing special going on at the moment I mean uh, both of white bishops are you know, nicely posted but not doing much really there's uh, no real action on his diagonal so some point or it might think about improving these guys okay uh, not a quiet position not the, not the most exciting so maybe we should start another circle around the positions going back to gumi against gumi Kramer versus Kramer gumi versus gumi one man no one name G versus K. And this game we left after after what? Sixteen rook to E seven. We had queen to B three. White wanted to avoid the trade. Uh, queen to d5, black really wanted the trade, white said okay fine I'll give you the trade but at least you're not getting immediate control over the d-file, because now white can contest it immediately, knight jump back to c6 and now knight c5, perhaps since white is uh, a bit earlier with his active operations on the queen side, he might be doing okay here. Pawn to f5. Fortunately for black, this, this rook is covering b7, so everything is covered. So now black will start thinking about pawn to e4. Well, which which would open up his bishop, but uh, the downside is if you play e4, you open up for this London bishop here. And this diagonal where it can you know, affect things. Well, that's not something you necessarily want to do, so maybe it's best for black actually to to keep the tension. Uh, yeah. so black to move here, knight c4. Uh, do we want to block the bishop with f4? <coughs> <coughs> Comes into consideration actually, but... Uh, not like giving away a square like e4, but on the other hand, we uh, shut down this piece, so we, we give away one thing, we get, we get another thing. But it seems seems anti-positional actually, yeah, because the bishop can. For those who follow the U.S. Championship, the bishop can, can come to life through g1, and after f3, we have a new diagonal. And if we have the e4 square also, then this would be to white's benefit. Blacks. Pawn majority on the king side will be stopped, so we uh, reroute our bishop. We have a pawn majority on the queen side, and probably, probably an endgame advantage. So not many, many developments in, in this game. Uh, I'm wondering if we should look at. Uh, some games from the challengers actually. Because in the challengers group uh, we have some strong players finally meeting at the top. Uh, Well, this game's over. It's game over.
What? Well, it was, but no, it isn't. So, four of some cartas, so shall we have a look at, at this game? Why not? Let's add this game, uh, the top game in the challengers group. So, for that, uh, let's actually go off screen for a minute then. And back. This game. It's from the challenges group. And it's uh, the 60 year old Gilby Thorlason. against FM uh, Kartansson David top seat in the challenges group and yeah Gilby recently turned 60 years old he got some some flowers presented to him in the first round and actually uh, uh, yeah I heard that he was almost Late for this game, almost lost it because of the uh, forfeit rule. You have to be here in, in 30 minutes before the, you know after the game starts. But you managed to do that. Here we have also the Felidor, the same as in uh, uh, Gretason Danielson. Kill uh, goes for a more, more restrained approach here with bishop e2, bishop e7, castles c6. H3 castles. This is actually a solid, interesting line for black to play. E6, E1. It's always, you know, technically slightly better for white, but C4, A6. Yeah, this is the line we talked about earlier, where uh, the setup for black is quite easy. Bishop B7, Bishop B3, E8. That's why we played h6 now, so we can play rook e8, there's no knight c5. Bothering us on, on the f7 square, d takes e5, d takes e5. No, it took with a knight. He took with a knight. Okay. Knight to d4. Bishop to f8. So now there's some pressure on this pawn, we can think about c5 in some positions, putting pressure on e4. Bishop d2 doesn't look like the best score of the bishop, but maybe you can think about rook d1 and then just swing the bishop back out of the way. Uh, b5 was played, pawn takes b5 and a takes b5. Okay, rook takes and queen takes, and this is uh, something you see in some Spanish, like Spanish prior uh, pressure here. That's why I say it reminds me of, of the Spanish a bit. Because some of the pieces go like in the Spanish, uh, especially in the Briar, you have this this uh, battery quite often. Pawn on b5, rook on e8, put the bishop on f8. Knight f5, pawn to b4, and this signals that black wants to play c5, knight d1, pawn to c5. So big pressure on this pawn, how to deal with it. It seems like there's only one good way to do it. Uh, I mean, you could play knight g3, protect the pawn, but black can add offenders, if you will, to uh, to this pawn. You can play here. You can also think about this move. Try and jump here to d4, which is now vacant. But white went with f3. He wanted to keep his uh, active knight on f5. But, yeah, I think black has gotten more or less what he wants out of this opening. I 
And aside from his bishop on f8, I mean, most of his pieces are quite actively placed, and we, we might think about opening up the game now with uh, pawn to d5, which is a, it's a thematic push. I mean, this pawn is backwards, so theoretically weak, but at the moment can't really be attacked. But d5, and we want to open up, you know, chip away at this, at these pawns to make this battery here on the diagonal more effective. Also try and open up for the rook here, so I think d5 wouldn't surprise me if, uh, well, okay, he hasn't played it. But, uh, yeah, we have a 20 minute time match for, for Davi here, but, and he's thinking with the black pieces. Yeah, he, he's definitely thinking about d5 here. Um, yeah, probably should get back to some master games unless we have something really interesting happening in the other games. Seems like more or less the uh, Top seeds are, are doing a good job in their games and, and, and the challengers. But uh, let's move back to, to the masters. Um, and we're going to look at Gertersson and Danielsson again. See what has happened in this game. Danielson, let's bring this game up, see what has happened. So g4, bishop e6, uh, knight f5, and Henrik chopped it off. Do we have a choice? Maybe not. Bishop's attack. If you protect it, uh, then I don't see why we can't just uh, take it and take the pawn. And it's also like, it looks like this. So. We chopped it off. Bishop takes f5. E takes f5. Not taking with a g pawn. He wants to open the e file. Rook a to e8 was played. Tighten the bishop. Keeping the other rook on f8. You know, with his tender pawn on f7. Bishop e3. Interesting move. And quite often we see that uh, grandmasters don't care about pawns on b2. In this case, if we take it, well, let's always this move. Queen doesn't feel awfully safe right now, does it? Uh, Yeah, maybe uh, why does just lose? Uh, Black is just losing too much time. I mean, I mean, yeah. This might be threatened now and takes e7. So uh, queen back, but can we play like g5 now? Maybe might be possible to play g5 now. And the point is, the knight doesn't really have any great squares except this one. And now we can think about g6, and things are becoming. Quite critical for black here. Uh, note that uh, at any stage we could interpose this move. 
Uh, I don't think it's ne necessary, but what would always keep the demand in calculations if, if that would make a difference? Unlikely that it would do. So a big threat here and actually hard to deal with. If we play d5, then we can start thinking about moves like queen to h5. Some possible sacrifices even. Uh, here we, we might even want to keep the pin, you know, go here. Uh, by keeping the pin, I mean, I mean on this diagonal, like this. Try and play queen h5. It's a possibility. Seems like it should be something like this. I mean, I wanted to play queen h5, but... Uh, Maybe black can, can defend here, at, le at least for a minute. <laughs> no, it's tricky though, you know, because there are plenty of options here. Okay, I want to take on g7, but it's, it's with check. I was thinking about the undefended piece here. Yeah, but something like this is just, I mean, I mean, he's not taking a b2. I mean, who wants to defend this? Who wants to have to calculate all this? So after bishop e3, he actually... Uh, Prevent it. This g5, g6 business, b3, uh, h6. So now, actually going back, why didn't white just go for g5 immediately? That's a good question. g5. Why not g5 immediately? Yeah, maybe d5 is, is more effective now. Yeah, there's also no... Uh, yeah, in the other line we had a position of d4, which was, was quite strong. Uh, but here... Here we might close things up with d5 immediately and... Okay, it could still be dangerous, but not the same effect. It should be 3... Yeah, but okay, hey, hang on a minute. The computer actually wanted to play g5 here. Uh, it's only on 13 play, but the move looks dangerous for sure. So Helki has 9 minutes against 50. And a good question, why didn't you just go g5? Now black has prevented it. And after bishop e3, h6, h4, knight h7. And we prevented all the funny business. <laughs> or heavy. <laughs> Yeah, good question. This could be a critical point here. G5 instead of bishop e3, something uh, something to look at. And I mean, if you want to improve in chess, uh, you know, positions like this, you should stop and analyze and find out, uh, you know, just look at this with a computer and on the board and, and find some options and see what's working and what's not working because it's 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 really instructive. And that's the way to learn. Okay, bishop e3, h6. Let's just move on to the current position because once again, Grandmaster Helgi Kretersson is really, really going for it here. <coughs> he went pawn g5. Very aggressive. Very, very aggressive. So what does he have in mind here? Well, black has to be careful because it's not elementary how he takes things here because if he takes with the knight first, bishop takes, bishop takes, rook takes e8, black recaptures, queen h5, he can't protect the pawn on f7 and bishop on g5. And, well, Choose wisely, my friend. If you play queen d8, it's, well, it's made ish, but it's not made actually. You have bishop at six. Okay, but it's uh, risky. So I will take with the bishop then. And black is in a world of hurt. Okay. 
But okay, g5, pawn takes, pawn takes. Can you take with the bishop then? Must be the better move. The main line. Uh, do we have more? We have eight takes. H takes g5 on the board. Bishop takes g5. What now? What now? What to do? Where to go? What to do? Is there a floor general? He tells everybody where to go, what to do. Maybe something committal like this. And attack on this guy. So let's say we take, but this improves the rook. Oh, hang on a minute. No, that's, that's not good. I thought f7 was, was under attack, but it's actually not. So queen h5 is probably not a good move here. So still, uh, only move 17, and Helki has 9 minutes left against uh, Henrik's 48 minutes. H takes g5. Uh, don't know why he's thinking on this move. Uh, oh, okay, we have the answer. He didn't take back. He actually went queen to h5. Really going for it. Gung Ho style, all in. Wipe this all in with nine minutes on the clock. Put it on the board. Take it to the bank. Yeah, this is a tough position to play <laughs> with no time on the clock. So, okay, right now, White is threatening just to take on g5 with the pawn. White to move, he takes on g5, goes to g6. Black can uh, more or less throw in the towel if he allows this. So, do we want to keep things closed with g4 or go g takes h4? That's actually a good question. Queen d8 is also possible to add uh, defenders to g5. But um, yeah, things are starting to heat up, uh, and I have a feeling Henrik will think a bit here for sure. But we're actually gonna take a quick break now, and I will come right back in, in three or five minutes. I'm just gonna have something to drink, some some water, and have a look in the playing room, see uh, if I can tell the mood of the players and what's going on, get a better overview of the games.
Oh my. Up and yapping and yapping. I forgot to turn on the microphone. <laughs> so should we go back and look at some of the lines? Oh man. So yeah, I, I was saying that. Uh, yeah, earlier we mentioned that there were some threats here for White if it's him to move in this position. And like rook takes e7 and queen g4. Okay. Also, okay, I mean the lines were clear, but let's go to the current position. Yeah, idea king g2 and uh, rook e h1. But rook f2 e8 throws a spanner in the works. Uh, now, this plan of king g2, black can play rook e1. But, but, okay, wow, white is really thinking here. It's move 21, so 19 moves to play. Black has 40 minutes, and white has 3 minutes and 43 seconds. And he has to come up with something here. Queen g3. I think uh, that might be the best move. Now we have, well, black's move is forced here, pawn to f6. Um, well, one idea is just to try and win some material back with queen d6. Uh, I don't know if, uh, if that's the best move. It might well be. And here's here's a here's a wacky line. If if you take here, you take on d5, and somehow uh, everything is protected. Bishop protects the rook. This is protected. And if you take on d4, then you lose the queen. It takes e7 check and then we well double <laughs> double check. So this is more than check. This is going to be mate. Uh, whichever square we choose, it's it's mate. So a nice line. Uh, so obviously black can't do that. Can we counter attack like knight e4 maybe? That might be possible. Uh, yeah, but can we oh, this is up. Oh, this is so nice. Knight takes d5. In the same line. And it's gonna be mate. Oh, oh, in your in your in your face. Hey, oh, that's outstanding. Just kidding, Inky. Thank you for pointing it out. I actually should check my Facebook a little bit more. Yeah, that's a, that's an outstanding, that's an outstanding line. So this might be a, a, a let's see if we have most on the board actually. Queen g3, black is thinking. Yeah, it looks like... I mean, there's no clear continue. How, how do we continue? F6. I mean, there's no more attack. Something like this. We're not on the H file, so... We're too late, and rookie 1 is threatened. We don't have time for king c2. <coughs> Bishop e3 must be too slow here. I mean, we're down a whole rook. Basically, all we could do here is play for cheapos. Uh, if, if our queen was on the eighth file, we could maybe play with a3 and try and deliver mate on, on, on the eighth file. But I mean, okay, this, this must be too slow. <laughs> That's a jack. But still, uh, the same trick as before we have made here. Uh, if, uh, 
black isn't careful. So maybe, maybe this is not out of the question, but uh, looks more like a blitz. Yeah, so surely there's a defense here for, for black. Mm. Let me just maybe attack the bishop. This. Maybe the other one. I'm not sure. Because you want to keep something on the back rank. Uh, yeah, they should do the trick. And uh, we can always think about sacrificing on t5. And we'll be up to exchange. So that's a bit of a extravagant idea. So a queen t6. And we have it on the board. f6, queen t6. So Hank is up to 4 minutes against 35. So, I mean, this is by far the game of, of the round. Um, yeah, and we have these backy lines, especially, I, I think... Yeah, I mean, this looks so tricky because 94 is too. Uh, and white takes. I mean, this is what black might be thinking. Okay, he takes. I go here. Uh, things look safe, but it turns out we don't even address our queen. We take on d5. No, you can't take with a pawn because then your queen drops off the board, and you can't recapture our queen. And like we said before, knight takes d6 is uh, fantastic. Fantastic. <clears throat> Hello, Blitzstream. Hello, Chichi News. I just want to keep this position on the board for a while. Okay, uh, Black must do something. He has to give up this knight, so the question is how is that position? He's going to have six pawns against five, maybe queen d8, maybe queen b4. Uh, yeah, I'm not sure. Oh. Yes, yes. <clears throat> so yeah things might actually quiet down uh, this looks really exciting some exciting variations but okay Henrik actually went with queen a6 this has been played he's playing really fast um, really trying to uh, make the time trouble count for white here queen d6 a6 yeah queen a6 has a clear idea once you take on c5 uh, probably with a bishop just to keep more proximity with the queen. And you have this idea, uh, what has to take, black takes. And I guess it's safe to stay here. And then queen f1, and all of a sudden it's black who's attacking, but he also has to be careful. Uh, there are back rank issues for black as well here. And now we have check. Black can't do this just yet, but that's one of his ideas. So maybe after King H2, we'll start with Knight G5. Now we have the H7 square, and now we want to play uh, Queen F1.
Yeah, so now actually things might be shifting here and, and black could be thinking about aggressive intentions here. So yeah, quite an interesting game actually and um, we have to applaud Grandmaster Gretason for his aggressive play, play here and making this quite an exciting game. Uh, yeah, we started to. Uh, yeah. We have to take a break at around uh, the two hour mark when we have been streaming for about two hours because I want to archive it on YouTube so it only uh, takes two hour videos. So. Okay, that's still about 20 minutes away. But yeah, things might quiet down here actually, but. Uh, Having said that, okay, Helke is down to 1 minute 40 seconds. Uh, takes to the bishop on c5. Uh, 2 minutes for Helke, he has to uh, make 16 moves still. And it seems like Henrik is really uh, tempted to play quite fast here to put uh, put the pressure on, on, on Helke. Okay, rook e1 suggests itself uh, knight g5 perhaps as well so if, if you're trying to press somebody on the clock and you have two moves that, uh, that you think are of equal value uh, well close to it and one of them is, is more obvious then I guess you should play the, the less obvious move because when you're in big time trouble what you tend to do is find a stock response against your opponent's move so if your move uh, surprises your opponent he's gonna have a hard time reacting okay we actually have rookie one on the board uh, rook takes e1 rook takes e1 and king h2 which is absolutely forced if you go to g2 then queen f1 comes with tempo so you have to go to h2 and probably gets mated as well so king h2 and I think knight c5, uh, yeah, suggests itself. And we have a highly uh, original position here. Okay, this hasn't been played, but I have a feeling he'll play this. Yeah. Uh, Wondering if we should move on to other games because we've we've been looking at this game for a while. But <laughs> okay, it's really interesting. I mean, uh, okay, maybe maybe Black's trump right now is, is he has some some play against White's king. But in terms of material, White is starting to do uh, quite okay here actually. So he's actually recovered the material, it's, it's all about the piece placement uh, at the moment. If you could do something for this bishop, I mean, if you could put this bishop on g2, I mean, okay, just speaking, you know, generally, then, then uh, he might be doing okay here. Yeah, okay, knight g5 has been played. Uh, it's a bit tricky. A bit tricky. Yeah, we'll come back to this one. Let's uh, see if, if there's some action in other games. Action. Romance. Desire. Okay, here's one game which is uh, evaluation about zero. This one is uh, actually quite interesting also. You might have a look at Hjörvar against Eina Hjalti. Like I said, Brian Hannes already drew, which we predicted. The other game is quite mm, not so exciting. So, should we uh, see a few more moves in Hagi? Uh, 
Okay. Oh, he's down to 50 seconds. We have to stay on this. We have to stay on this one. I'm trying to work, uh, work in perhaps a camera from the hall, but but it's tricky. Hmm. Okay, um, we'll move night. Whoa, hang on a minute. That's rather drastic. Never ending action with 20 seconds left on the clock. He went with knight to b5. Wow, whoa, whoa, knight to b5, man. Okay, what's his idea? If pawn takes, he wants to take with the queen. King has to run. Run, run, little piggy. And are we just mating here? Maybe bishop e3 first, forcing something, but no. I think this should be. <laughs> yeah, so black can't take it. Well, wow. queen takes and then queen g8. Whoa! This looks quite forced. Don't see anything else. And then bishop g8. And the queen is completely out of the game. I mean, can't even make a check here. So, yeah. But that's ah, not the move we want to play with. No time on the clock. That's quite a move to make, knight b5. So, we're going to stay on this game. I mean, it's. All the action here. Action, romance, desire. So he can't take it. So what can Black do here? I mean, the knight and the rook can't can't threaten the king here all by themselves. So, I mean, we, I guess we could move the king, maybe king h7, so that maybe we're threatening to take. We could maybe move the queen to a better square and protect here with queen a8. But yeah. So, yeah, we have a question. What about instead of knight b5, knight takes d5? Yeah, that's a good idea, perhaps. Um, unless... Unless it's getting mated. So this is a good a good puzzle for you. Why not, why not knight d5? Why not? Well, good puzzle for you. If you take it, I have queen check, king h2, queen h3, and knight f3 checkmate. So that's why. And if you don't take the rook, uh, you should get mated as well. I mean, king d2 allows queen f1, king here, uh, muchos, muchos, muchachos, what does it do? So I don't think, uh, yeah, there's no mate now like before. Like if knight a7, we have king a7, no mate, and knight takes f7, then king a in the corner. So yeah, instructive, knight takes d5, almost worked, but there was this nice move, rook h1, knight so, b5, a nice move, because rook h1 was a threat, and maybe not so easy to, to notice. 
But a nice tactical potion, yeah. Nice tactical potion. And we have moves. We have Queen A8 on the board. And here, Helki played Queen to D7. Okay, what's the idea here? Now if we take... I'm not sure, maybe we can take now, but okay, of course white will always at least have some... Uh, compensation in, in the form of a bishop pair. We might even take here first. We might, yeah. And then take on p5 and this pass pawn could become dangerous. That's one idea. Um, Wow, had you made this move, queen d7, with uh, six seconds left on the clock. Quite amazing. I mean, he's, he's perhaps finding some nice moves here with uh, with no time on the clock. So remarkably, uh, material is around equal. And black actually might have to be careful here. I mean, uh, what can I think about knight c7 in some positions? This knight can, uh, well, I mean, in some cases, take on t5, in some cases, down to e6. And once the knight is out of harm's way, we can start thinking about activating this guy. Maybe they'll play c4 at some point. So. This is like, yeah, awesome game, cool game. So I'm wondering if, if finally, finally Henrik spent some time here. So we have time to look at uh, Hero against Dana Hjalti because we have some developments in that game. Let's, let's quickly take a look at it. Uh, was um, not this one, this was the draw, Stefansson draw. So this one, we left it after 18 moves and we have a bunch of moves now. So this is actually... Okay, don't, I'm just going to remove the title, so this is actually a... Hjörvar uh, Gretason against Einar Hjalti Jensson, so A6 was played, Knight F3. Queen b7. Yeah, like we talked about well a long while ago now. E5. Queen e4. And yeah, I was actually walking uh, when uh, in the hall when he played Queen e4 and well Hedro was looking into the air and, and frowned a little bit. And then he uh, took with a rook on d what? Here's d5, queen e5. Oh, yeah, yeah, okay. I was looking uh, at the move list in the wrong order. So e takes f6, sacrificing the queen. F takes e7, rook e8, rook e2, uh, protecting this one. Well, indirectly, after queen e4, now we take so three pieces for the queen. g5, black wants to g4. H3, and I guess H5 then. No, F5. You know, keeping this threat alive. Uh, so white wants to get the queen away from this diagonal, but queen b7. Insisting. Now this pawn is, is... Well, it's so well posted that we have to defend it, so bishop a3. H5, because uh, yeah, the rook was defending here. But now we're threatening to play g4, but white played g4 himself. So quite an interesting position. White has three pieces for for the queen, which generally people would prefer the three pieces. I don't think this is an exception. Um, if White can solve his uh, 
inactive pieces and you know you just cluster them together uh, in the middle of the board and uh, starting to like white. I'll take the white, white side. I mean, I'm, I'm not sure what the plan is, but I think most people would rather be white here. Okay, uh, do we have some moves? Certainly we do. Certainly we do. So we go back to the game of the round. The game of the round, by far. Grandmaster Haki Gretason against Grandmaster Henrik Danielsson. Queen 7 was played when Henrik actually took on b5. Which was answered with Bishop takes d5 check, which we already had here. King at 7. And here, uh, wow. What's wrong with bishop takes b7? Seems like there's something horribly wrong with bishop to takes b7. Seems like there's something wrong with this move. I don't see it. Uh, I mean, maybe you can play knight f3, but um, a check. And the thing is, don't really have a choice. I mean, the queen interposes. We take the bishop. Uh, King g2. Well, then we can just move the queen closer. Queen f4, yeah, thank you. Thank you, uh, the threat arrow. Queen f4, and this is looking uh, mate -ish. And if bishop d6, then I think queen back to uh, a7. Now we have a threat here. Queen is becoming active. Uh, we have to play. Something like this, and surprisingly, the king is quite safe here, it seems, for the moment, for the time being, because all the entry squares to, to, h, to h5, g6, and they're all covered by the knight, by the rook, so the queen can't really get to uh, this perpetual diagonal. This, this guy also can't make any discoveries. Here, we might even go like 94. Well, that's not a good move. Yeah, maybe just take a pawn here and should be okay. It might be something better, but uh, uh, he went bishop e3, which is actually the computer first choice, and I'm really surprised how how well he's playing here, uh, at least according to according to the computer. Quite remarkable. So bishop b3, and finally, uh, Henrik is starting to use his time a bit. He's down to 22 minutes. Of course, Helki only has one minute. Uh, which means, yeah, he made bishop e3 quite fast. Because he was down to his last second. Uh, on the most before that, so bishop e3. Yeah, nice move, because... If queen b8 now, we, we cover the f4 square, and we're not getting into trouble. So there's no queen f4, you know, to g4. The queen e5 is not uh, not as effective. In this case, we might go to the back rank. And black actually has to be quite worried, because 
this fish up here is uh, pinning the knight. So if you play something stupid like this, then uh, it's actually made because the knight is pinned. So here we might have to think about returning the material. Uh, well, we can take on a five maybe. It also looks quite risky actually. Yeah, we can go to C8. Uh, no, we can't. We can't. Can't do that. It's a quite a tricky position, and understandably, finally, uh, Black is using his time and I mean, I mean, he has to. Play some bad moves, I mean, then he's just potentially in trouble here. Um, look, let's look at this line queen b8, king g2, queen e5. So, queen d8, maybe we can just take this pawn. Take your pawn! Can we do that? And if queen checked, then now we have queen a, well, maybe here, maybe. No, I'm not a big fan. And now if Jack, then now uh, we can interpose the Queen. Mm, there shouldn't be any problems with Black, so we must hold on to his F5 pawn. So what to play in this position? Um, I mean, maybe Black is not threatening anything, so maybe just take a pawn now. Take a pawn. Uh, material is is fine. I mean, we have the Bishop here against the Rook and the Knight, and there are no immediate threats. I mean, this guy isn't threatening anything. It's more like a defensive piece. So things seem to be uh, under control for right here. Okay, so black thinking now. Uh, should we check out some of the other games? Quick look back at the uh, Hero Rush game. So G4, uh, pawn token, token, token G4, uh, pawn takes E5, uh, deflecting the rook from the fourth rank. But now we can interpose here. So F takes G4 is not uh, winning the rook, at least not immediately. So I think we can imagine something like this. Okay, well, black and white has to look out for this, but fortunately, I think this is okay. But we really have to be careful. So F takes G4. Uh, knight takes E5. Ah, okay, and the idea is Rook takes to just Defend the rook, okay. Fair enough. And again, I think I prefer white because of, well, three pieces for the queen, and it's gonna be hard for a black to, to win. I mean, even if we uh, imagine a situation where the rooks are chopped off, black wins the e pawn, we exchange all the king's side pawns, and Let's see, Black is left with this. Even if he makes a fast pawn, knowing that uh, we take all the pieces of the board and we have only the bishop remaining, we put it on b2. We have a king over on, on the queen side and one knight on d4. It's actually a fortress against the queen. And it would be a draw as well. So I have a really hard time seeing. Uh, Quite losing here, so I think the question is if he can uh, press on for the win. Uh, he's thinking here after FTX T4, he has six minutes versus uh, twelve. Gimme Gisla against. Uh, 
your cat punch. I mean, not any heavy duty. Let's just catch up a little bit. Uh, I'm sorry, I don't have any, any title on this. But this is Gummy Gisla with white. Gummy Cat punch with black. King F1. Rook C8. Rook E2. H6. Maybe he wants to expand on king side, but g4 he wants to he wants to get this e4 square. Bishop f6. So black keeps keeps intention. He wants to keep the pawn f5 to control the e4 square. And bishop f6 perhaps played to uh, prevent something like this, attacking the pawn. Rook d6, king to f7, bishop to g3, pawn to e4. This is the way. Black wants to organize his pawns and now bishop h4, tactical move. If pawn takes, we can interpose taking here. Uh, which probably looks good for white. So after bishop h4, black got knight e5, counter, uh, a nice counter. So I'm wondering, bishop h4. Yeah. Actually, white should have played knight h4, which. Uh, Computer gives a big edge to white, but after bishop h4, things were around the equal mark. But I think knight d5 actually wasn't the best move. And white should take here and go knight h4, attack the weakness. Looks logical. But uh, after knight d5, well, he, okay, he played this. Takes knight h4, b6, and knight takes f5. I h4, b6, and that takes f5. So this is on the board. Winning a pawn at the moment, but uh, the knight on c5 is hanging. Me? Yeah, the thing is, what will get two pawns here? Takes, take knight 6 King g6 might run into some, some issues. Uh, with some pins. Once you start, uh, you can't defend with this rook because the knight is hanging. Defend with the other one, then uh, we activate this rook. And it's getting problematic. In the station, he can't move the knight because, uh, well, where do you want to put it? Let's do something passive with this move as well. So, yeah. So you can take and, and 